Continue on physical chemistry, chapter seven. We're beginning section four now. <clears throat> First, we're gonna talk about a solid-solid phase transition. Now, polymorphism is when a compound forms several different crystal structures. For example, zinc sulfide. Zinc bland is tetrahedral, kind of like diamond, but wurzite hex hexagonal, hexagonal. <laughs> the equivalent of polymorphism in elephants is called allotropy. For example, carbon. It can be either diamond or graphite or buckyballs. These are called allotropes. Now let's look at the sulfur phase diagram. So here's pressure on the vertical axis divided by atmospheres to get rid of the unit. Here's temperature in degrees Celsius. So notice up here we have the, or down here we have the gas at lower pressure, higher temperature, and then higher pressures we have the liquids. And then in here we have a solid form called monoclinic. And then out here we call it, have a solid form called orthorhombic. So you'll notice then that sulfur has three triple points. One is where the orthorhombic, monoclinic, and gas are in equilibrium. And that's at 95 degrees Celsius. Two is where monoclinic, liquid, and gas are in equilibrium. That's at 119 degrees Celsius. And then three is where orthorhombic, monoclinic, clinic, and liquid are in equilibrium. And that's at 151 degrees Celsius. Uh, phosphorus has allotropes also, and ozone obviously has allotropes, because um, in the gas phase, there's O2 and there's O3. So it doesn't have to be the solid phase. Now, the metastable state we say that phase alpha is said to be metastable with respect to beta if the molar Gibbs energy in phase alpha is greater than the molar Gibbs energy in phase beta, or that the chemical potential in phase alpha is greater than the chemical potential in phase beta. For example, let's say we have two boxes, two identical boxes. One is laying with the big side down, and one is up on its end. Then we would say, now the one up on its end is just not going to tip over on its own. It'll stay that way but it's got higher potential energy. So we say that sticking up on its end is metastable relative to lying flat. Now, this is a different diagram down here. So if it's metastable, it's gonna slowly go to stable, if it can at all. Just wanna draw a line in here. This is a different diagram. Anyway, so alpha is said to, has to exist in the first place for an appreciable or significant amount of time. No example of metastate, diamond is metastable compared to graphite, superheated H2O liquid or supercooled liquid, a supersaturated solution, or superheated water coming from undersea geysers. All those are metastable. That's the end of section four. Now we're in chapter seven, section five. Let's talk about higher order transitions. So far, all the transitions we've talked about so far are uh, first order transitions. Like a liquid gas or solid liquid, we said that the change in enthalpy is equal to QP, which is not equal to zero. And the change in um, internal energy, is, I think, is that internal energy or volume? Can't read my own handwriting. I think that's supposed to be energy. We'll figure that out. That's it, it, a first order. So here we go. Here's the heat capacity, constant pressure against temperature. So as we're heating up solid water, we come up to the transition. Right at the transition, it's undefined. And then it comes back down from really, really high as it's a liquid. So this is the melting point. And the, the heat capacity right at the melting point is not defined. Now remember, CP, the heat capacity at constant pressure, is the differential of heat at constant pressure but the derivative of heat with respect to pressure, holding temperature constant at constant pressure, or no, with respect to temperature at constant pressure, or equal to the derivative of enthalpy with respect to temperature, holding pressure constant. Now let's look at an example of a second order transition. Here we are again, graphing heat capacity versus temperature. So the same thing, We're get, as we approach the transition, the heat capacity is gonna increase the heat capacity is going to increase by a finite amount, and then it's going to continue on up merry way. So the heat capacity constant 
pressure is, remember, the partial derivative of enthalpy with respect to temperature holding pressure constant. But that formula does not apply to this. Likewise, the heat capacity, it um, changes in heat at constant pressure with respect to temperature holding pressure constant. That does not apply to this either. Now the change in volume is equal to zero, and the change in enthalpy is equal to QP, which is equal to zero. So yeah, I think this one back up here was volume. I'll have to check and make sure. Make sure I put a question mark to check. Okay. For example, let, um, let's say we have a, a solid metal or whatever that um, normally conductive, and then we um, make it a superconductor. For mercury, that transition temperature is 4.2 kelvins at one atmosphere. So that would be a second order transition. So the derivative of pressure with respect to temperature is going to be equal to the change in enthalpy divided by temperature times delta volume. This is the Clausius Clapeyron equation. But the thing is, that doesn't apply because with a second order transition, the change in volume is equal to zero. You'd be dividing by zero. Now let's talk about a lambda transition. So here's heat capacity versus temperature again. Notice we're coming up just like before, and it goes up to infinity from either side. That's why it's shaped kind of like a lambda, if you use your imagination. So a lambda transition and approach to the heat capacity at constant pressure approaches infinity from both sides. Now the change in enthalpy is equal to temperature times the derivative change in entropy, which is equal to zero, and the change in volume is equal to zero. Now um, heat capacity it can go towards infinity or just a very large finite amount. <clears throat> Example of lambda transitions. Let's say we go from paramagnetism to ferromagnetism in um, iron or nickel. Or um, helium has different allotropes of, in its liquid phase. So we go from liquid helium 1 to liquid helium 2. That's not the isotope. That's the phase of the liquid. Now there's also different types of crystal structures. Like BCC, it stands for body center cubic. And HCB is hexagonal. Hexagonal closed packing. Superfluid, there's no resistance. It crawls out of the container. See handouts 29, 30, and 31. That is the end of chapter 7.